everybody, I'm Yili Song and today I'm going to share with you a time-lapse video along with commentary on how I painted a wild dog. No, not the Australian one. The Asian one. Asian wild dog. I think this is another one of those hidden gems of Malaysia because for us city folks, I think a lot of us don't know what animal this is. And for me to find out that these beautiful animals exist in our own country and we just don't know it? Like in my previous video of a Asian tricolor squirrel, the design is just so unique. And for this dog, it's like a dog and a fox combined. How awesome is that? So this is an Asian wild dog, also known as a doe. And now without further ado, hope you enjoy. For this painting, I used Golden Artist colors for my brushes and Vallejo paint for my airbrush on a 14 by 18 inch Artist Canvas Studio. Links to where I bought them are down below in the video description. If you find it useful, please let them know Elis Wong sent you there. I like bokeh backgrounds because the background is that it has that nice soft touch to it while the subject is nice and crisp. And to do that, I use a flat color of cerulean blue and I paint the background. And to give that nice soft look, I use an airbrush and I sprayed the first layer being white and then glazing it with light blue. I use a big brush and I just keep blocking in the colors, maybe do a, a little of that fur texture. Even though it's really at that really early stage, there shouldn't be any form of details whatsoever. It's just really to block in the colors, to know where your subject is, and this is a good guideline as you move on further up. There is no particular brush you need at this point. I just use whatever brush. In fact, this brush I'm using is so old. The amazing thing about brushes, if you take care of them, they can last a really, really long time. I use pure white and do the outline of the dog. Backlighting is really interesting. I really like backlighting because it adds a lot of drama. So I'm starting with darker color and then I just go over it with lighter, lighter layers and, and build up those layers so that the fur looks so real, a lot more realistic. I use my favorite brush. Take a little bit of that paint and just stroke it and you're going to do this for a long time. For dogs, the fur on their faces is really really short. So you can see my strokes are very very short as compared to other parts of the dog's body. For example, the thickest part of a dog's fur is around the neck. In nature, when dogs attack each other, they always go for the throat. And that's why dogs have really, really thick fur around your neck. It's a defense mechanism. So when you paint a dog, their fur around your neck is going to be a lot longer compared to other parts such as the face or their legs. So I block in the colors. And you don't have to worry whether you go out of the outline. You can always, you know, draw the line back. You can clean it up using pure black again. I then add my green and after that I just use I just wash my brush and because it's still wet it's very nice to blend the two together. One thing I like about these golden artist colors is that they don't dry as fast so it's very nice to blend. If you paint really good eyes then the rest of your painting doesn't really need to be that detailed because the eyes capture all the attention of the viewer. For the reflection of the eyes, just a nice glaze and then a very pure white at the edge. Now that I've done the eyes, you can see there's like a big difference on how the progression works. I changed my color mixture, so now it looks a little bit more orange than the flat, dull, whitish, pale comparison. 
Now as I continue my fur texture, I'm just, you know, doing the same thing again, which will be the ears and the remaining right side of the dog. Just one layer of fur is not enough. You're gonna need a lot more than that. It takes patience and just lots of work. <laughs> So same concept with the orange fur, where I start from a darker color, in this case it's dark gray, and then I slowly move up using lighter and lighter gray. This is actually the same concept for any other fur that you paint. And because, as I said before, that dogs, their neck fur tend to be a lot longer than their face, this finishes fairly quickly because the strokes are a lot longer so I can cover more grounds a lot faster. And you can see that as I zoom out, everything is coming together along nicely. Doing the nose of the dog will be the easiest. It's just to kind of like give the, to create that illusion of texture. So what I did was I used a brush and then I polka dot it, but then I used my finger to dab on it because your fingers have all your little fingerprints, you know, it's really textured. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed that and I really hope this inspires you to volunteer or donate to your nearest wildlife NGO. If you like a more detailed tutorial on how I painted this, you can check out my Patreon page. You can support me and receive exclusive rewards there. Or you can also leave a tip. Links are down below in the video description. You can also follow me on the following social media sites which I also listed down in the video description. That's all for today and thank you for watching. Bye!